Back to the Jets, because here's the segue that I've been kind of flickering on to. The Jets opened the season with the 49ers on a Monday night in September, <laughs> which is the topic we were supposed to be talking about for the last 22 minutes. A smattering of news from the defending NFC champions, the team that has been kicking the door, banging on the door, pounding on the door, running into the door, but unable to bust it down. It was open, but it got slammed back in their faces a couple of times by Patrick Mahomes. They have done a, a few things. One, Juwan Jennings, who we mentioned this recently. There were moments in Super Bowl 58 where it's like, is this guy the MVP if they win? Who's the MVP if they win? Is it him? I think it could be him. Well, he was a restricted free agent with a $4.89 million tender. He was staying away from OTAs. He has a two-year deal with a base value of up to, not a base value of up to, I've just contradicted myself. It's worth up to 15.4. We have to see what the base value is. $10.5 million fully guaranteed. Up to means there are incentives and or escalators that drive it up to 15.4. Look, I, I mean, he's not a key member of the offense, but he's a guy they had to pay. And to his credit, he drew a line in the sand. He didn't have any leverage. When you're a restricted free agent, you've got the window where someone can sign you to an offer sheet. That closes before the draft. After that, your only alternative is you just stay away. No one can try to come get you. And he stayed away, and he got something. And it, the, just the numbers, look, they're, they're good. But it doesn't scream out this guy's one of the top two receivers on the team. This isn't like he's the Brandon Ayuk replacement. No, I, I, that, that's exactly right. I, this is more about a guy that is part of the culture of our team and embodies what like a Shanahan and John Lynch want, right, for, for, for everything that they stand for. I think that's it. You know, selfless, right? Not worried about how many catches, anything like that, but he run blocks, he catches the ball over the middle, he's very good on special teams, and he's, you know – for for a a a wide receiver group where we don't know what's going to happen with Ayuk right now, Debo Samuel plays receiver a very physical manner and way in which he does it, where he can be banged up at times. Uh, Juwan Jennings, I think, is the the perfect insurance policy for Shanahan because he's like, wait, he can kind of do everything, right? You know, he's a pretty good route runner. He's got enough speed to scare people. He's tough. He'll break a tackle, you know. He'll insert and get down there close to the tight end in the tackle and go in and block a linebacker, block a strong safety. So he does all the little things that I think real that coaches love, right? He's kind of that guy. And then you add on that, I think, with special teams and everything there, that, yeah, they, they look at it and go, wait, we, we want this guy on our team, period, right? Whether he's the, the – he's really the fourth receiver. That's what he is, right? But, you know, as we know with injuries and the way Shanahan plays offense, there's a role for that guy, and it's not going to be go, get the ball to him a lot, but get the ball to him sporadically, and then he does a lot of, like I said, like I said the little things uh, that a lot of receivers don't do for your football team. Somebody asked me, how was he only a restricted free agent because he was a seventh round pick in 2020? He's got four years in. Not to get too deep into the weeds, but he was cut before his rookie season. He was on the practice squad. He was injured. He didn't get a year of credit. So his, his contract's expired, but he doesn't have four years. He's got yeah, three years. Right. And so he's a restricted free agent, even though he was a, a draft pick in 2020. He, he got cut and he hung around. No one else grabbed him on waivers. He's been a part of the 49ers for four years now, but he only has three years of service. So he was a restricted free agent. He gets his contract and he'll show up. And now they only have Brandon Ayuk, who is still waiting for his deal. I don't, as I said earlier, from a football standpoint, I don't think this has any impact on no. Brandon Ayuk. I don't see an impact on the negotiations because we're talking about two different stratospheres of player. No, I, exactly right. I don't think this has anything to do with Brandon Ayuk at all. The only, I think, correlation where this might have been related to Brandon Ayuk is the fact that they're going through practice right now and they're going, damn, we'd like Jawan Jennings out here. We don't have Ayuk. Like the next best thing is Jawan Jennings and he's a good player. 
and he fills a lot of roles within the offense like we talked about, right? And like we always talk about and you bring up, when you get to that fourth and fifth receiver guy, right, not that you have to have a lot of snaps on special teams, but the fact that you might back up a lot of people and have that versatility to do that. So, again, I think there's a lot of areas he fills, let alone they're probably looking at it going, wait, we got Debo, okay, wait, we got a rookie here, you know, we got some other guys that are, are veteran value signings, but and they're learning the offense. Wait, we we need our guy in here that we know knows the offense and the energy guy and all of that. And I think that's where Juwan Jennings, you know, fills that void. And and I think that's what the kind of the contract he got kind of speaks to there. I had a flashback to I think the year was 2012. The Steelers were trying to sign Mike Wallace. Remember him? Yeah. And he didn't take their offer, so they just took it to Antonio Brown. Right. And. And see you later, Mike Wallace. That's not the case here. It's not here. here, no. Right. And it's not like the dollars that are used for Jennings take away what could be there for Ayuk. Ayuk is a completely different thing. $14.1 million on his fifth-year option, and they've been in a tough spot all offseason trying to figure out how much he should get paid in this market. And is he going to be the guy where the position just is, sorry, you're not getting $30 million a year. You're not getting $25 million a year. Because we feel like Ricky Pearsall or somebody else could come in and do what you're doing. And I really do believe, going back to when this first came up, they would love to just hold everything in place through this season. Right. And then figure out, what do we do with Debo? What do we do with George Kittle? We got to pay Brock Purdy. Christian McCaffrey isn't going to be happy with 11.8. His contract's come and due. Yeah. What are we going to do with all these guys? But yeah. let's just keep the band together for one more year. It's going to be hard for them to do that. How's that feel? I, I agree with you there. It does have that feel. It is going to be hard, right? They're doing their best to keep it together. Yeah, it does seem like the rubber's going to meet the road after the season. They're going to have the few things to deal with. No doubt about that, right? You talk about Juwan Jennings. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Brian Brandon Ayuk. No, the thing that has to do with Brandon Ayuk is Ricky Pearsall. That, that is a clear sign of where this is going that they don't want a long-term deal, really, I, I don't expect. Or, or like you said, they're going to try to get out of one or the other, Ayuk or Debo, after the year and then go, okay, we got Ricky to replace him, let alone maybe they get out of both. I, I don't know. But you're right. I think that's it's definitely going to be interesting to see how Shanahan and Lynch kind of finagle the roster here, the money situation a little bit, and how they you know play these situations that are that are sensitive. There's no doubt about that. 